In the French mode of grafting known as the Bertemboise, the crown of the stock is cut at a long level, about one inch. At the top being left square, and an angular piece is cut away in which the scion is inserted. It is then bound and waxed over. Theophrasts or rind grafting is used where a tree has strong roots but inferior fruit. The branches are cut off about one minus a half or two feet from the main stem. A sharp cut two or three inches. In length is made down the bark of the branches, and the lower parts of the scion, selected from a superior tree, having been cut into tongues resembling the mouthpiece of a flagellet, the bark of the branches is lifted with a knife, and the tongues of the scions are slipped in, bound, and wax. D-side grafting is useful where it is desired to replenish the tree with a fresh branch. A T-shaped cut is made in the stem of the tree, table of contents extending to the inner bark. The scion is prepared by a longitudinal sloping cut of the same length as that in the stem, into which it is inserted, and the two are bound together and treated like other grafts. Approach grafting is the most favorable method of obtaining choice varieties of the vine, or of growing weak sorts on roots of a stronger growth. The scion is generally grown in a pot. A portion of the bark is cut from both scion and stock while the vine is in active growth, and the two wounded parts brought into contact, so that they fit exactly. They are then tied together, and moss, kept constantly wet, is bound round the parts. The union may be completed by the following spring, but it is safer to leave the cutting down of the stock to the point of union and the separation of the scion from the potted plant until the second spring. Grafting wax, cobets, etc. Pitch and resin four parts each, beeswax two parts, tallow one part. Melt and mix the ingredients, and use when just warm. It may be rolled into balls and stored in a dry place. Clay bands are frequently employed for excluding the air from wounds caused in the process of grafting. These are liable to crack, unless the clay is well kneaded and mixed with wood ashes or dry horse droppings. Grapes dash the cultivation of grapes in the open in our cloudy and changeable climate cannot be looked forward to with any certainty of success. Two successive favorable seasons are indispensable one to ripen the wood, and the next to ripen the fruit. Nevertheless, the highly ornamental foliage of the vine entitles it to a place on our walls, and every facility should be afforded for the production of a chance crop of fruit. The soil most suited to the growth of the vine is a medium loam, with which is incorporated a quantity of crushed chalk and half-inch bones. It should be given a south aspect, and be liberally supplied with water in dry seasons. April is the best time to plant it, spreading the roots out equally about 9 inches below the surface of the soil, and mulching with 3 or 4 inches of manure. Should mildew set in, syringe the vine with a mixture of soap suds and sulfur. To secure a continuance of fruit, cut out some of the old rods each year as soon as the leaves fall, and train young shoots in their places. Last year's shoots produce other shoots the ensuing summer, and these are the fruit bearers. One bunch of grapes is enough for a spur to carry. Professional gardeners cast off the weight of the bunches, and allow one foot of rod to each pound of fruit. Tie or nail the bunches to the trellis or wall, and remove all branches or leaves that intercept light and air. The vine may be increased by layers at the end of September. Cut a notch at a bud, and bury it four or five inches deep, leaving two or three eyes above ground. It may also be propagated by cuttings, about one foot in length, of the last year's growth, with one inch of old wood attached, taken the latter end of February. Plant these deep in the ground, table of contents leaving one eye only above the surface. Both the black hammock and royal muscadine ripen as well as any in the open. It is under glass only that grapes can be brought to perfection. Here a night temperature of 55 to 65 degrees, with a rise of 5 or 10 degrees in the day, should be maintained, the walls and paths damped once or twice a day, and the vine siring frequently until it comes into bloom, when siringing must cease, and a drier atmosphere is necessary. The moisture being reduced by degrees. As the grapes ripen, admit more air, and reduce the heat, otherwise the fruit will shrivel. 
after gathering the grape syringe the vine frequently to clear it from spiders or dust, and keep the house cool to induce rest to the plant. The fruit may be preserved for a long while in a good condition by cutting it with about one foot of the rod attached, and inserting the cuttings in bottles of water in which a piece of charcoal is placed, the bottles to be placed in racks nailed onto an upright post in any room or cellar where an equable temperature of 45 or 50 degrees can be kept up. The system of pruning adopted is that known as spur pruning, sea pruning. Mrs. Pearson is a very fine variety, and produces very sweet berries, the frontinese grizzly black and white are also delicious. Grasses, natural agrostis stolonifer, creeping bent grass, dot dash useful for damp meadows. Alopecurus pertensis, meadow foxtail, dot dash strong growing and very nutritious. Anthoxantha moderatum, true sweet vernal, comma dash hardy and gives fragrance to hay. Avena flavescens, yellow oat grass, dot dash fine for sheep, grows freely on light soils. Sinusurus cristatus, crested dog's tail, dot. Suitable for any soil. Dactylus glomerata, cock's foot, dot dash strong and coarse growing, cattle are fond of it. Festica duriuscula, hard fescue, dot dash dwarf growing, excellent for sheep. Festica elasure, tall fescue, dot dash useful for cold, strong soils. Festica ovina, sheep's fescue, dot. Fine for dry, sandy soils. Festica ovinatinuifolia, slender fescue, dot dash suitable for mountain pastures. Festica pertensis, meadow fescue, dot dash good permanent grass for rich, table of contents moist soil. Flum pertense, timothy, or cat's tail, dot dash suitable for strong soils. Nutritious and hardy. POA nemeralis, wood meadow grass, dot dash good for poor soils. POA pertensis, smooth stalked meadow grass, dot dash grows well on light, dry soil, and also in water meadows. POA trivialis, rough stalked meadow grass, dot dash fine for damp soil. Grasses, ornamental. Fine for mixing in a green state with cut flowers, or in a dried condition for the decoration of vases, winter bouquets, etc. To have them in perfection gather them while quite fresh, with the pollen on them. Cut with as long stems as possible, arrange lightly in vases, and keep them in the dark till they are dried and the stems become stiff. The grasses may be divided into two sections, viz, those for bouquets or edgings, and those grown in the border or on lawns for specimen plants. The class is numerous, but the following, which may be found described herein under alphabetical classification, may be mentioned dash for bouquets and edgings, agrostes, anthoxanthum, avena, brisa, coiolacrima, irigrostis, festica, hortum jubitum, ligurus, and stipa penata. For specimen plants, eulalia, genrium, panicum, phalaris, and zea. Gratiola officinalis dash this hardy herbaceous plant bears light blue flowers in July. A rich, moist soil is its delight. It is propagated by dividing the roots. Height, one foot green fly. Fumigate the infected plants with tobacco, and afterwards syringe them with clear water, or the plants may be washed with tobacco water by means of a soft brush. Gravilia-handsome greenhouse shrubs, which require a mold composed of equal parts of peat, sand, and loam. Give plenty of water in summer, a moderate amount at other seasons. Ripened cuttings may be rooted in sand, under a glass. Young plants may also be obtained from seed. They bloom in June. Their common height is from 3 to 4 feet, but G. robusta attains a great height. Gravilias will grow well in windows facing south. Griseli a dwarf growing, light-colored evergreen shrub, which will thrive near the sea. It requires a light, dry soil, and may be increased by cuttings. Gelder rose dash C. viburnum. Guernsey lily, Nerine sarniens, dot. Soil, strong, rich loam with sand, well drained. Plant the bulbs deeply in a warm, sheltered table of contents position, 
and let them remain undisturbed year by year. Keep the beds dry in winter, and protect the roots from frost. They also make good indoor plants, potted in moss or coconut fiber in September, or they may be grown in vases of water. Gumming of trees dash scrape the gum off, wash the place thoroughly with clear water, and apply a compost of horse dung, clay, and tar. Gunnera monicata, Killian rhubarb, dot. This hardy plant bears large leaves on stout footstalks, and is very ornamental in the backs of borders, etc. Planted in a rich, moist soil, it will flower in August. It can be propagated by division. Height, 6 feet Gunnera scabber dash has gigantic leaves, 4 to 5 feet. In diameter, on petioles 3 to 6 feet in length. It prefers a moist, shady position, and bears division. Makes a fine addition to a subtropical garden, where it will flower in August. Height, 6 feet genrium, pampas grass, dot. This unquestionably is the grandest of all grasses, and is sufficiently hardy to endure most of our winters. It is, however, desirable to give it some protection. It requires a deep, rich, alluvial soil, with plenty of room and a good supply of water. Plants may be raised from seed sown thinly in pots during February or March, barely covering it with very fine soil, and keeping the surface damp. Plant out at end of May. They will flower when three or four years old. The old leaves should be allowed to remain until the new ones appear, as they afford protection to the plant. It may be increased by division of the root. Height, 7 feet gypsophila dash of value for table bouquets, etc. They will grow in any soil, but prefer a chalky one. The herbaceous kinds are increased by cuttings, the annuals are sown in the open either in autumn or spring. They bloom during July and August. Height, 1 foot to 3 feet h habruthumness dash these beautiful evergreen shrubs require greenhouse culture, and to be grown in sandy loam and leaf mold. The majority of them flower in spring. Height, 4 feet to 6 feet Halesia tetraptera, snowdrop tree, dot dash this elegant shrub will grow in any soil, and may be propagated by cuttings of the roots or by layers. The pendant white flowers are produced close to the branches in June. Height, 8 feet. Hamamelis, witch hazel, dot dash an ornamental shrub which will grow in ordinary soil, but thrives best in a sandy one. It is increased by layers. May is its season for flowering. Height, 12 feet to 15 feet h. Arborea is a curious small tree, producing brownish yellow flowers in midwinter. Table of contents Harpalium rigidum a hardy perennial, producing very fine yellow flowers in the autumn. It will grow in any good garden soil, and may be propagated by seed sown in early autumn, or by division of the roots. Height, 3 feet hawkweed dash sea crepes and hieracium. Hearts ease dash sea pansies. Heaths, greenhouse dash for their successful growth heaths require a well-drained soil, composed of three parts finely pulverized peat and one part silver sand, free ventilation and a careful supply of water, so that the soil is always damp. If they suffer a check they are hard to bring round, especially the hard-wooded kinds. Some of the soft-wooded heaths, such as the H. hyemalis, are easier of management. After they have flowered they may be cut hard back, repotted, and supplied with liquid manure. The stout shoots thus obtained will bloom the following season. See also Ericus. Hetera C. ivy. Hedicium gardnerianum a hothouse herbaceous plant, delighting in a rich, light soil, plenty of room in the pots for the roots, and a good amount of sunshine. In the spring a top dressing of rich manure and soot should be given. From the time the leaves begin to expand, and all through its growing stage, it needs plenty water, and an occasional application of liquid manure. The foliage should not be cut off when it dies, but allowed to remain on all the winter. While the plant is dormant keep it rather dry and quite free from frost. It may be increased by dividing the roots, but it blooms best when undisturbed. July is its flowering month. Height, 6 feet heady serum. 
hardy perennials, requiring a light, rich soil, or loam and peat. They may be raised from seed, or increased by dividing the roots in spring. H. multijugum bears rich purple flowers. Height, 6 in. To 3 feet Helen Eames. The pumulum is a very pretty hardy perennial that may be grown in any soil, and increased by dividing the roots. It produces its golden flowers in August. Height, 1 minus a half feet H. Autumnal is also easy to grow, but flowers a month later than the pumulum, and attains a height of 3 feet H. Vigeloe is the best of the late autumn flowering species, producing an abundance of rich yellow flowers with purple discs. Flowers in August. Height, 3 minus a half feet Helianthemum alpinum, rock roses, dot. These hardy perennials are best grown in sandy loam and peat, and may be increased by cuttings placed under glass in a sheltered situation. Bloom in June or July. Height, 1 foot Helianthus, sunflowers, dot. The tall variety is a very stately plant, suitable for the background or a corner of the border. Well-grown flowers have measured 16 inches. In diameter. The miniature kinds make table of contents fine vase ornaments. They grow in any garden soil, and are easily increased by seed raised on a hotbed in spring and afterwards transplanted. The perennials may be propagated by division of the root. They produce their flowers in August. Height, 3 feet to 6 feet helichrysum. Fine everlasting hardy annuals, that grow best in a mixture of 3 parts peat and 1 part sandy loam. May be readily raised from seed sown in a cold frame in March, or cuttings taken off at a joint will strike in peat and sand. Bloom during July and August. For winter decoration the flowers should be gathered in a young state, as they continue to develop after being gathered. Height, 1 foot to 6 feet, but most of them are 2 feet high. Heliophila-pretty little hardy annuals, thriving best in sandy loam and peat. Sow the seed early in spring in pots placed in a gentle hotbed, and plant out in May. They flower in June. Height, 9 inches. Heliosize dash this hardy perennial is useful for cutting purposes, the flowers being born on long stalks, and lasting for two or three weeks in water. It is not particular as to soil, and may be increased by dividing the roots. Height, 5 feet heliotrope dash commonly called cherry pie. Sow the seed early in spring in light, rich soil in a little heat, and plant out in May. The best plants, however, are obtained from cuttings taken off when young, in the same way as verbenas and bedding calciolarias. They are very sensitive to frost. Flower in June. Height, 1 foot helipterium a half hardy annual, bearing everlasting flowers. It should receive the same treatment as helichrysum. Blooms in May or June. Height, 2 feet helibrous, Christmas rose, dot dash as its name implies, the hellebore flowers about Christmas, and that without any protection whatever. The foliage is evergreen, and of a dark color. When the plant is once established it produces flowers in great abundance. The plants of the white flowered variety should be protected with a hand light when the flower buds appear, in order to preserve the blossoms pure and clean. Any deeply dug rich garden soil suits it, and it is most at home under the shade of a tree. It prefers a sheltered situation, and during the summer months a mulching of litter and an occasional watering will be beneficial. Readily increased by division in spring or seed. Height, 1 foot. Heloneos bulata a pretty herbaceous plant, bearing dense racemes of purple rose flowers from June to August. It grows best in peat in a moist position. It can be raised from seed or increased by division of the roots. Height 1 minus a half feet hemerocollies, daylily, dot. Old-fashioned plants of great merit. Planted in large clumps they produce a grand effect. They are easily grown in any common garden soil, and bloom in July. Height, 3 feet h. Quanso has handsome, variegated foliage. Table of contents hemp dash cana and cannabis. Hepatica. This enjoys a rather light, sandy soil and a shady situation. 
the roots should be taken up and divided every second year. Well adapted for surrounding beds or clumps of rhododendrons. Flowers in March. Height, 4 inches. Heraclium. Coarse hardy biennials, that may be grown in any kind of soil, and are readily raised from seed. They flower at midsummer. Height, 2 feet to 4 feet herbs dash thyme, marjoram, chervil, basil, burnet, hyssop, savory, etc. Should be sown early in spring, in dry, mild weather, in narrow drills about half a inch. Deep and 8 or 9 inches. Apart, covered evenly with soil, and transplanted when strong enough. Mint is quickly increased by separating the roots in spring, and covering them with 1 inch. Of earth. Sage is propagated by slips of the young shoots taken either in spring or autumn. If planted in light soil and in a sunny position it produces very fragrant flowers. Chives should be planted 6 or 8 inches. Apart, they are increased by division in spring. Penny royal, like mint generally, will grow from very small pieces of the root, it needs to be frequently transplanted, and to be kept from a damp condition. Rosemary will grow from cuttings planted under glass in a shady spot. Thyme likes a light, rich soil, and bears division. Sorrel will grow in any soil, and the roots should be divided every two or three years. Chamomile roots are divided and subdivided in spring. Herbs should be harvested on a fine day, just before they are in full bloom. Tie them up in small bunches and hang in the shade to dry, then wrap in paper and store in airtight vessels, or rub the leaves to a powder and keep in tightly corked bottles. They will retain their strength for a long time. Herbs, the uses of sweet and pot dash angelica dash a biennial. Leaves and stalks are eaten raw or boiled, the seeds are aromatic, and used to flavor spirits. Anise dash leaves used for garnishing, and for seasoning, like fennel, the seeds are medicinal. Bomb dash a hardy perennial. Makes a useful tea and wine for fevers. Basil, sweet, and bush. Half hardy annuals. The leaves and tops of the shoots, on account of their clove-like flavor, are used for seasoning soups and introduced into salads. Borage dash hardy annual. Used for salads and garnishing, and as an ingredient in cool drinks, excellent also for bees. Chamomile. A hardy perennial. Flowers used medicinally. Caraway dash a biennial. Leaves used in soups, and the seeds in table of contents confectionery and medicine. Chervil dash an annual. Useful for salads. Chives dash hardy perennial. The young tops used to flavor soups, etc. Coriander a hardy annual. Cultivated for garnishing. Dill a hardy perennial. Leaves used in soups and sauces, also in pickles. Fennel a hardy perennial. Used in salads and in fish sauce, also for garnishing dishes. Whorehound a hardy perennial. Leaves and young shoots used for making a beverage for coughs. Hyssop. Hardy evergreen shrub. Leaves and young shoots used for making tea, also as a pot herb. Lavender dash hardy perennial. Cultivated for its flowers, for the distillation of lavender water, for flavoring sauces, and for medicinal purposes. Marigold, pot dash hardy annual. Flowers used in soups. Marjoram, sweet or knotted, and pot dash hardy annuals. Aromatic and sweet flavor. Used for stuffings and as a pot herb, leaves dried for winter use. Rampion dash hardy perennial. Roots used as a radish, they have a nutty flavor. Rosemary dash hardy ornamental shrub. Sprigs used for garnishing and the leaves in drink. Rue dash hardy evergreen shrub. Leaves used for medicinal drinks, useful for poultry with croup. Sage dash hardy perennial. Decoction of leaves drank as tea, used also for stuffing, meats, and sauces. Savory, summer dash hardy annual. Used for flavoring soups and salads. Savory, winter dash hardy evergreen shrub. Its aromatic flavor makes it valuable as a pot herb. 
scurvy grass dash the small leaves are eaten as watercress scurrit dash hardy perennial sweet white and pleasant the tubers are boiled and served up with butter table of contents sorrel broadleaf dash hardy perennial imparts an acid flavor to salads and soups thyme broadleaf dash hardy perennial young leaves and tops used for stuffing also in soups and sauces tarragon dash hardy perennial for flavoring vinegar also used in salads soups and pickles wormwood dash a hardy shrub beneficial to horses and poultry and is used for medical purposes herniaria glaber dash these dwarf carpeting plants are of easy culture grow from seed in spring and transplant into sandy soil height one minus a half in hesperus sea rocket huchera dash very neat but not showy hardy american perennials they may be grown in any ordinary light garden soil are increased by dividing the root and bloom in may height one foot to two feet hibbertia dentata an evergreen twining plant requiring a greenhouse for its cultivation and a soil of sandy loam and peat it flowers in july and is increased by cuttings taken in spring or summer and kept under glass height six feet hibiscus africanus dash a handsome hardy annual mallow sow in march in slight heat and plant out in may 10th in apart grows best in a mixture of loam and peat blooms in june height two feet hibiscus syriacus rose of sharon dot a hardy deciduous autumn flowering shrub which will grow in common soil and may be propagated by seeds layers or cuttings planted under glass height six feet hieracium hawkweed dot dash a free growing hardy perennial suitable for a sunny bank or border it is not particular as to soil from june to september it produces orange brown flowers it grows freely from seed and the roots bear division Height, 1 minus a half feet hippie strums dash c amaryllis. Hippocrepes dash very pretty hardy trailing perennials, covered from May to July with golden pea-shaped flowers. They will grow in any light, sandy soil and may be increased by cuttings, which root readily under glass. Height, 3 inches to 6 inches. Hippophy dash ornamental shrubs, thriving in ordinary soil, and increased by layers or cuttings of the roots. H. Ramnoids, C. Buckthorn, flowers in May. Height, 12 feet whole Boelia latifolia C. Stauntonia latifolia. Table of contents Holly, Ilex, dot dash this pleasing hardy evergreen shrub thrives best on a deep, sandy loam, but will grow in any good soil, provided the position is dry. It succeeds well in the shade. Cuttings of young shoots having one inch of the old wood attached will strike root, but the plant is of very slow growth, and takes at least four years to grow into a good bush. Choice varieties may be grafted or buddied onto the common sorts in June or July. To grow holly from seed, gather the berries when ripe, crush them, and mix them up with a little sandy loam, bury them in a hole three feet deep, and cover with litter. Dig them up and sow them in March. Big bushes are best moved at the end of August, mixing the earth to a puddle before planting. The less pruning they receive the better. They may be trimmed in spring. Hollyhock dash may be raised from seed or cuttings. Sow the seed about the second week of March in very rich soil, and cover it with one inch of dry earth. In June, having soaked the bed thoroughly overnight, Remove the young plants to a nursery bed, setting them six inches apart. Press the earth firmly round the roots, and water plentifully until settled. In the autumn plant them where they are to bloom. Cuttings may be taken as soon as the flowers appear, or from the old plants in autumn. Each joint having an eye will furnish a plant. Select side branches having two or three joints and leaves. Cut the shoots through just under the lower joint, leaving the leaf entire, cut it also about 2 inches above the joint. Plant in equal parts of loam, gritty sand, and leaf mold, shelter from the sun, 
and sprinkle them every day in fine weather with water. If the cuttings are taken in autumn pot them off in 60 sized pots, and keep them in a cold frame till the spring, when they may be planted out. Flowers in August. Height, 6 feet home rias dash beautiful little South African plants. For outdoor cultivation plant the bulbs in a dry, warm situation, from October to January 3rd in. Deep, and the same distance apart, in rich, light, well-drained soil, and protect them from heavy rains with a good layer of leaves. For pot culture put four or five bulbs in a five inches. Pot, place in a cold frame, and cover with coconut fiber until the growth appears. Water moderately, and when the flowers fade abstain from supplying moisture. The bulbs are not quite hardy, therefore they should be removed indoors before frosts appear. Homogyne Alpina Hardy herbaceous plants flowering in April. Any soil is suitable for them, and they may be increased by division. Height, 6 in. Honesty, Lunaria, dot dash interesting hardy biennials. When dried, the shining seed pods make a handsome addition to winter bouquets, mixed with ornamental grass. Any common soil suits them. Sow the seed any time from April to June, and transplant them to the border in the autumn for flowering the following May. Height, 1 minus a half feet to 3 feet honeysuckles. These rapid twiners thrive in any loamy soil, and may be increased by putting down layers in the autumn, after the leaves begin to fall. They can also be propagated by cuttings taken in the table of contents autumn and planted in a shady, sheltered spot. Caprifolium brachypoda and the evergreen C. sempervirens are handsome, free flowering kinds, suitable for almost any situation. C. aurea reticulata has beautifully variegated leaves, which render it very ornamental. Height, 6 feet to 8 feet hop. A useful hardy climber for covering verandas, summer houses, etc. Plant in rich, loamy soil, and increase by dividing the roots. See also Humulus japonicus. Hortum jubitum, squirrel tail grass, dot dash a very pretty species resembling miniature barley. Sow seed in March, covering it very lightly, and keep the surface of the soil moist till the grass appears. Height, 1 minus a half feet Hormonum pyrenaicum dash this hardy perennial produces erect white flowers with blue corolla in June or July. It will grow in any ordinary soil, but needs protection in winter, as it is apt to be injured by damp. It may be propagated either by seed or division. Height, 1 minus a half feet horn poppy dash C. glossium. Horseradish dash plant in October or February in deep, rich soil. Or it may be grown on a heap of cinder ashes, or on any light ground through which the roots can make their way readily. The best way to increase it is by slips taken from the roots. It requires little or no attention beyond pinching out the tops when running to seed and keeping the ground hood. Hot beds to make dash take dead leaves and stable straw, with the dung, in the proportion of two double loads for a three light frame. Turn it over four or five times during a fortnight, watering it if it is dry. Then mark out the bed, allowing one foot or more each way than the size of the frame. Shake the compost well up, and afterwards beat it down equally with the fork. Place the frame on the bed, leaving the lights off for four or five days to allow the rank steam to escape. Keep a thermometer in the frame, and as soon as the temperature falls below 70 degrees apply a lining of fresh dung to the front and one side of the bed, and when this again declines, add another lining to the back and other side, and so on from time to time as occasion requires. The mats used for covering the frames in frosty weather should be made to fit the top, and not hang over the sides. House leek dash C. semper vivum. Houstonia coeriaea dash these hardy little evergreens are more generally known as bluets. They make charming ornaments for rock work, planted between large stones, but in this position they need protection from severe frosts. When planted in pots and placed in a cold frame they show to most advantage. A mixture of leaf mold and sand, and a moist but well-drained situation is what they delight in. They bloom continuously from April to July. Height, 3 inches. 
Table of Contents Hovia Celsi A Greenhouse Shrub, which is evergreen and elegant when in flower in June. A sandy loam and peat soil is most suitable, and it may be increased by cuttings planted in sand under a hand glass. Height, 3 feet Humia A remarkably handsome and graceful plant, the leaves of which when slightly bruised yield a strong odor. It is equally suitable for the center of beds or large borders, and placed in pots on terraces or the lawn it is very effective. The seed should be raised on a gentle hotbed, then potted off and kept in the greenhouse till the second year, when it may be turned out into a warm situation. It generally succeeds better in such a position than in the greenhouse. Flowers in July Height, 6 feet to 8 feet Humulus Japonicus dash dash, Japanese hop, dot dash a hardy annual hop of rapid growth, the leaves of which are splashed with white. Useful for covering arbors, verandas, etc. A deep, loamy soil suits it best. Increased by seed sown in gentle heat in February, and gradually hardened off. Flowers in July. Height, 20 feet Hutchinsia alpina dash This small alpine creeper is a profuse bloomer, its glistening white flowers being produced at all seasons. It grows in moist vegetable mold, and bears transplanting at any season. Care, however, is required to prevent its roots overrunning and choking other things. Height, 2 inches. Hyacinths dash may be grown in pots, in glasses, or in beds and borders. The soil should be rich and light. Good loam mixed with old manure and a little leaf mold and sand suits them very well. If intended to be grown in pots the best time to begin potting is early in September, putting more in at intervals of two or three weeks until the end of December. One bulb is sufficient for a 5 inches or 6 inches pot, or three may be placed in an 8 inches pot. The soil under the bulb should not be pressed down. The top of the bulb should be just above the surface. Place the pots on a bed of ashes in a cold frame, put a small inverted pot over the top of the bulb, and cover the hole with coconut fiber or cinder ashes to the depth of about 4 inches. In about a month roots will have formed with about 1 inch of top growth. The plants may then be taken out, gradually exposed to the light, and finally removed to the conservatory or sunny window. The doubles do best in pots. For growing in glasses select the firmest and best shaped bulbs. Those with single blossoms are preferable, as they are of stronger constitution than the doubles. Fill the glasses with pure pond or rain water, so that the bulbs just escape touching it, and put a piece of charcoal in each glass, and change the water when it becomes offensive, taking care that the temperature is not below that which is poured away. Stand the glasses in a cool, dark place for three or four weeks until the roots have made considerable progress, then gradually inure to the full light. September is a good time to start the growth. When planted in beds or borders, place the bulbs about four inches. Deep and table of contents six inches. Apart, putting a little silver sand below each one. This may be done at any time from October till frost sets in. They succeed fairly well in any good garden soil, but give greatest satisfaction when the ground is rich and light. Hyacinthus, Muscari, Dot. A very hardy race of spring flowering bulbs. Though the varieties are very dissimilar in appearance, they all produce a good effect, especially when planted in good large clumps. Plant from September to December. A sandy soil suits them best. The following are well-known varieties dash botryoides, grape hyacinth, dot dash very pretty and hardy, bearing fine spikes of deep, rich blue flowers in compact clusters on a stem 6 to 9 inches. High. Sweet scented, and blooms about May. The alba, or white, variety is also sweet scented. Hyacinthus continued. Candicans, Galtonia, dot dash the white cape hyacinth, or spire lily. A hardy, summer flowering, bulbous plant 3 feet to 4 feet in height, gracefully surmounted with from 20 to 50 pendant, bell-shaped snow white flowers. Thrives in any position and equally suitable for indoor or outdoor decoration. Moscatus, musk hyacinth, 
dot dash bears very fragrant purplish flowers. Plumossum, feather hyacinth, dot dash a fine, hardy, dwarf plant suitable for any soil. Its massive sprays of fine blue flowers, arranged in curious clusters, 5 to 6 inches. In length, resemble much branched slender coral. Rasimossum, starch hyacinth, dot dash rich dark blue or reddish purple flowers. Very free flowering and fine for massing. It is similar to the cape hyacinth, but flowers in denser spikes. Hydrangea dash this shrub delights in a moist, sheltered position and rich soil. It may be increased at any time from cuttings of the young side shoots, 2 or 3 inches. Long, under glass, in sandy soil. The old stems will also strike if planted in a sheltered situation. The plants should be cut back when they have done flowering, and protected from frost, or they may be cut down to the root and covered with manure. They are well suited for the front of shrubberies, and also make fine plants for pot cultivation. The flowers are produced in June and July. Height, 3 feet Hymenanthera crassifolia dash ornamental evergreen shrubs, thriving best in a compost of loam and peat. They are increased by cuttings planted in sand and subjected to a little heat. Height, 6 feet Hymenoxys dash pretty little hardy annuals that may be easily raised from seed sown early in March in any garden soil. They bloom in June. Height, 1 foot Hypericum. St. John's Word, dot. Favorite Dwarf Shrubs Any soil suits table of contents the hardy kinds, but they prefer shade and moisture. These may be increased by seed or division. The greenhouse varieties thrive best in a mixture of loam and peat. Young cuttings placed in sand under glass will strike. July is their flowering season. Height, 1 minus a half feet to 2 feet I Iberis dash C candy tuft. Ice plants dash C mesembryanthemum. Ilex dash C holly. Impatient sultani dash half hardy perennials. May be raised from seed sown early in spring on a hotbed, or later on in a shady spot in the open border. Greenhouse culture, however, is more suitable. They bloom in August. Height, 11 halves feet in carvalias dash ornamental hardy herbaceous plants, of easy culture. They are suitable for the border or the rockery, and will grow in any soil if not too dry and exposed. The tuberous roots may be planted at any time in autumn, 4 inches. Deep. Idolave I makes a fine solitary or lawn plant, its leaves being from 1 to 3 feet long. The soft rose pink, mamulus shaped flowers, which are carried on stout stems well above the foliage, appearing in May. Care should be taken not to disturb it in spring, and it is advisable to cover the roots in winter with a pyramid of ashes, which may be carefully removed at the end of April. Incarvalias may be propagated by seed sown, as soon as it is ripe, in light, well-drained soil, giving the young plants protection in a frame during the first winter, with enough water merely to keep them moist. Height, 2 feet Indian corn dash cesia. Indian shot dash cicana. India rubber plants dash C ficus. Indigo ferra dash beautiful evergreen shrubs. I Australis has elegant, fern like foliage and racemes of pink or purple pea shaped flowers in April. I Decora alba bears its white flowers in July. They require a sandy loam or peat soil, and greenhouse culture. Cuttings of the young wood planted in sand under glass will strike. Height. 21 halves feet insects on plants dash to destroy insects on plants wash the plant with tobacco water, which see. Or put one ounce of quasha chips in a muslin bag, pour on some boiling water, and make it up to a gallon. Dissolve one ounce of soft soap, add it to the chips, and stir well. Use it two or three times during spring and early summer. Table of contents Inula royliana, fleabane. Dot dash a hardy perennial which flowers in November. It will grow in any garden soil, and can be increased by seeds, or by division of the roots. Height, 3 feet Ionopsidium dash these hardy annuals grow freely in any rich, damp soil, a shady position is indispensable. Height, 1 8 feet Ipomoe. 
These beautiful climbing plants are very suitable for covering trellis work, or for the pillars or rafters of the stove house. The seed is generally sown in April on a hotbed or under glass, and the young plants set out in the border of the house in May in light, rich soil. Success is mainly secured by allowing plenty of root room. The perennial kinds are increased from cuttings taken from the small side shoots placed in sand in a brisk bottom heat. If grown in the open they often shed their seed, and come up year after year with but little attention. They make a good contrast to canariensis. The Ipomoe horsefalia, with its bright scarlet flowers, has a lovely appearance, but must be treated as a stove evergreen. This is propagated by layers, or by grafting on some strong growing kind. It thrives in loam and peat mixed with a little dung, and flowers in July or August. Height, 6 feet to 10 feet Ipomopsis dash a very beautiful half-hardy biennial, but difficult to cultivate. Some gardeners steep the seed in hot water before sowing it. But the best way seems to be to sow it in July in 3 inches. Pots in equal parts of sandy peat and loam, ensuring good drainage, and place it in a cold frame, giving it very little water. When the leaves appear, thin out the plants to 3 or 4 in each pot. Replace them in the frame for a week or so, then remove them to a light, airy part of the greenhouse for the winter. During this period be careful not to overwater them. In spring shift them into well-drained 4 minus a half inches. Pots, using the same kind of soil as before, and taking great care not to injure the roots, still give the least possible amount of water. If plenty of light and air be given, they will flower in July or August. Height, 2 feet Iers Enes dash take cuttings of these greenhouse plants in autumn. Insert them thinly in 48 size pots filled with coarse sand, loam and leaf mold, and place in a uniform temperature of 60 or 70 degrees. When they have taken root place them near the glass. Height, 1 minus a half feet iris dash the iris is the orchid of the flower garden. Its blossoms are the most rich and varied in color of hardy plants. For cutting, for vases, table decoration, etc., it is exceedingly useful, as it is very free flowering, and lasts a long time in water. It thrives in almost any soil, though a sandy one suits it best, and is strikingly effective when planted in clumps. It soon increases if left undisturbed. The English iris blooms in June and July, bearing large and magnificent flowers ranging in color from white to deep purple, some being self-colors, while others are prettily marbled. The German iris is especially suitable for town gardens. The Spanish iris blooms a fortnight before the English. Its flowers, however, are smaller, and the combinations of colors very different. The leopard iris table of contents, Pardant chinensis, is very showy, its orange-yellow flowers, spotted purple-brown, appearing in June and July. They are quite hardy. The best time for planting them is October or November, selecting a sunny position. Height, 1 minus a half feet isopyrums hardy herbaceous plants of great beauty, nearly related to the thalictrums. They will grow in any ordinary soil, but flourish best in vegetable mold, and in a moist, yet open, situation. They are readily raised from seed, or may be propagated by division of the roots in autumn. They flower in July. Height, 1 foot to 1 minus a half feet ivy, hetera, dot. A deep, rich soil suits the common ivy, the more tender kinds require a lighter mold. To increase them, plant slips in a north border in sandy soil. Keep them moist through the autumn, and plant them out when well rooted. The following are the principal choice sorts dash aurea spectabilis, palmate leaved, blotched with yellow, cavendishii, a slender growing variety, leaves margined with white, with a bronzy shade on the edge, conglomerata, crumpled leaves, elegantissima, slender growing, with silvery variegated leaves, Irish gold blotch, large leaves, blotched with yellow, Latifolia maculata, large white blotched leaves, Lee silver, silver variegated, Materiensis variegata, leaves broadly marked with white. Marmorata, small leaves blotched and marbled with white, 
purpurea, small leaves of a bright green changing to bronzy purple, rhomboids obovata, deep green foliage, rhomboids variegata, grayish green leaves, edged with white, and silver queen, a good hardy variety. Ixias Plant out of doors from September to December, in a sunny, sheltered position, in light, rich, sandy soil. For indoor cultivation, plant four bulbs in a five inches. Pot in a compost of loam, leaf mold, and silver sand. Plunge the pot in ashes in a frame or cold pit, and withhold water until the plants appear. When making free growth remove them to the conservatory or greenhouse, placing them near the glass, and give careful attention to the watering. Ixias are also known under the name of African corn lilies. J. Jacobia, ragwort, dot dash may be raised from cuttings in the same way as verbenas, and will grow freely from seed sown in autumn or spring. It delights in a rich, light soil. The purple Jacobia is a great favorite of the public. Flowers in August. Height, 1 foot Jacob's Ladder. C. Polemonium. Jejani perennes, sheep scabious, dot dash a hardy perennial which produces a profusion of heads of blue flowers in June, and continues to bloom till August. It enjoys a peat soil, and should have the protection of a frame during the winter. It can be propagated by seeds, cuttings, or division. Height, 1 foot table of contents jasminum dash these are favorite plants for training over arbors or trellis work, and for growing against walls. The hardy kinds will flourish in ordinary soil. The stove and greenhouse sorts should be provided with a mixture of sandy peat and loam. They may all be increased by cuttings of ripened wood planted in a sandy soil under glass. J. Nudifolium produces an abundance of bright flowers after its leaves have fallen, and is very suitable for town gardens. J. Unificinale is likewise adapted for town, bearing confinement well, and has very sweet flowers. J. Revolutum needs protection in severe weather. They bloom in July. Height, 12 feet jobs tears dash c coil acroma. John quills dash these are quite hardy, and may be grown in the open in the same manner as hyacinths. Five or six bulbs in a five inches. Pot make a very pretty bouquet. They are excellent early flowers, and very odoriferous. Plant in autumn, placing sand round the bulbs. Best not disturbed too often. The leaves should not be cut off when withering, but allowed to die down. They bloom in April. Height, 1 foot joss flower dash see Chinese sacred narcissus. Juniper, juniperus, dot. These useful conifers prefer dry chalk or sandy soils, but will thrive in any ground that is not too heavy. J. Japonica, Sabina, and Tamarisifolia do well on steep banks and rock work. They may be propagated by seeds, grafting, or by cuttings of firm young shoots planted in a sandy compost, kept shaded, and covered with a hand glass. K. Katsura Japonica dash this is a beautiful creeper for a south or west aspect. It thrives best in loam and sandy peat. Cuttings may be struck in sand, placed under a glass, and subjected to heat. Kale dash C. Borkole. Calmia latifolia dash this hardy, dwarf evergreen shrub is deservedly a great favorite. It produces a wealth of flowers in large clusters. It requires to be grown in peat or good leaf mold, and needs pure air. It is increased by pegging down the lower branches, which soon become rooted. The flowers are produced from June to August. Height, 2 feet callos and those dash showy greenhouse succulent plants. A light, turfy loam is suitable for them, and they may be increased by placing cuttings of the young shoots in a sandy soil on a slight hotbed in spring. Pinch them back so as to produce a bushy growth, and give support to the heavy heads of bloom. The cuttings should be left for 24 hours to dry before they are planted. The plants require very little water, and they flower in July. Height, 6 inches. To 1 foot table of contents call fussy a dash so this pretty hardy annual in April in the open border, or in March in slight heat. It may also be sown in autumn for early flowering. It will succeed in any light soil, blooming in July. 
height, 6 inches. Can Diamariatae a greenhouse evergreen twining plant of a very beautiful order, which thrives best in a compost of sandy loam and peat. Cuttings of the young wood planted in sand, and having a bottom heat, will strike. It produces its flowers in May. Height, 4 feet Other varieties of Candias range from 2 to 10 feet They all need to be well drained and not to stand too near the pipes. Caria, Corsurus, Dot. Beautiful hardy shrubs, which may be grown in any garden soil, and can be propagated by cuttings of the young wood, taken at a joint, and placed under glass. They flower at midsummer. Height, 4 feet Coel Rotaria paniculata. This is an ornamental tree bearing long spikes of yellow flowers in July. It will grow in any soil, but requires a sheltered position, and may be increased by layers or root cuttings. Height, 10 feet coal rubby, turnip rooted cabbage, dot. Though mostly grown as a farm crop, this vegetable is strongly recommended for garden cultivation, as it is both productive and nutritious, and is delicious when cooked while still very small and young. Sow in March, and transplant to deeply dug and liberally manured ground, at a distance of 15 inches. From each other. L. Lachinalia. Cape Cow's Lips. Dot dash charming greenhouse plants for pot or basket culture. Pot in December in a compost of fibrous loam, leaf mold, and sand. Place as near the glass as possible, and never allow the soil to become dry, but maintain good drainage, and only give a little water till they have produced their second leaves. No more heat is required than will keep out the frost. Lactica sunchifolia. So thistle leaved lettuce, dot. An ornamental, but not handsome, hardy perennial, with leaves one foot in length and nine inches. In breadth. It is of neat habit and enjoys the sunshine. A deeply dug, sandy loam suits it, and it may be increased by seed or division of the roots. The flowers are produced from September till frost sets in. Height, 2 feet Ladies Slipper Orchid C. Superpedium. Ladies Mantle C. Alcamilla. Ligurus ovidus This hardy annual is commonly known as hare's tail grass. It is distinctly ornamental, producing elegant egg-shaped tufts table of contents of a silvery white hue, and is fine for ornamenting bouquets. Sow in March, and keep the ground moist till the seed germinates. Height, 1 foot Lollamantia canes sends. Bees are very fond of this blue hardy annual, which may readily be grown from seed sown in the spring. Height, 1 foot Lamium dash These plants are mostly of a hardy herbaceous description and of little value. They will grow well in any kind of soil, flowering from March to July, according to their varieties, and can be propagated by seed or division. Height, 6 inches. To 1 foot Lantana dash These dwarf, bushy, half hardy perennial shrubs bear verbena like blossoms. They like a dry and warm situation and rich, light soil. The seed is sown in March to produce summer and autumn blooming plants. If cuttings are placed in sand, in heat, they will take root easily. Height, 1 foot to 1 minus a half feet Lepidria rosia. A beautiful climbing plant which bears large rose-colored flowers in May. It can be grown in any light, rich soil, but a compost of leaf mold, sand, and peat suits it best. It makes a very desirable greenhouse plant, and can be increased either by cuttings or by division. Lapidrius require partial shade, plenty of water, and good drainage. Height, 10 feet lardizable abide or not a dash this climbing shrub has fine ornamental foliage. It is most suitable for a south or west aspect, where it proves hardy, in other positions protection should be afforded. It will grow in any good soil. May is the month in which it flowers. Height, 20 feet Larkspur dash The stock flowered Larkspur is of the same habit as the Dutch rocket, but has longer spikes and larger and more double flowers. The hyacinth flowered is an improved strain of the rocket. Among other of the hardy annual varieties may be mentioned the candelabrum formed, the emperor, and the ranunculi flowered. They are charming flowers for beds or mixed borders, and only require the same treatment as ordinary annuals, 
when they will flower in June. Height, 1 foot to 2 minus a half feet. For perennial larkspurs, see delphinium. La Cyandra stove evergreen shrubs, flourishing best in a mixture of equal parts of loam, peat, and sand. They are propagated by cuttings of the young wood, plunged in heat. July is their flowering month. Height, 5 feet lasthenia. A hardy annual of a rather pretty nature, suitable for flower beds or borders. Autumn is the best time for sowing the seed, but it may also be sown early in the spring. It blooms in May. Height, 1 foot lathyrus. Handsome plants when in flower, the larger kinds being well adapted as backgrounds to other plants in the shrubbery, where they will require supports. They may be planted in any garden soil, and can table of contents be increased by seed, and some of the perennial kinds by division of the root. L. latifolia, everlasting pea, flowers in August, other varieties at different times, from May onwards. Height, 1 foot to 8 feet laurel. Laurels will grow in any good garden soil. They are grown both as bushes and standards, and require but little attention beyond watering. The standards are produced by choosing a young Portugal plant and gradually removing the side shoots on the lower part of the stem, and when the desired height is reached a well-balanced head is cultivated, any eyes that break out on the stem being rubbed off with the thumb. Lauro rotundifolia is beyond dispute the best of all laurels, it is of free growth and of dense habit, and its leaves are roundish and of a lively green. See also Epigea. All laurels may be propagated by cuttings and by layers, the latter being the plan usually adopted. Laurestinus. C. viburnum tinus. Laurus C. bay, sweet. Lavatera the greenhouse and frame kinds grow in any light soil, and are increased by cuttings of the ripened wood, under glass. The hardy herbaceous species grow well in any common soil, and are propagated by seeds or division. The annuals are sown in the open in spring. Some bloom in June, others as late as August. Height, 2 feet to 5 feet lavender, lavandula spide, dot dash a hardy shrub whose sweetly scented flowers, which are produced in August, are much prized. A dry, gravelly soil is what it likes best. Young plants should be raised every three years. It is readily propagated from seed sown in spring. Cuttings about 8 inches. Long, taken in autumn and planted 4 inches. Deep under a hand light or in a shaded, sheltered position, will strike. Height, 1 minus a half feet. Lawns to make or renovate lawns sow the seed on damp ground during March or April, if possible, but in any case not later than September, as the young plants are easily ruined by frost. Rake the seed in lightly, afterwards roll with a wooden roller, and carefully weed the ground until the grass is well established. To form a thick bottom quickly on new lawn sow 60 pounds, or 3 bushels, to the acre, for improving old ones, 20 pounds per acre. Frequent cutting and rolling is essential to success. If the grass is inclined to grow rank and coarse it will be much improved by a good dressing of sand over it, if it has an inclination to scald and burn up, sprinkle it with guano or soot just before a shower of rain. An accumulation of moss upon a lawn can only be cured by underdraining. Lawns, shrubs for dash C shrubs for lawns. Layering dash C under carnations. Letum, Labrador tea, dot dash low growing American evergreen shrubs, thriving best in sandy peat, and may be increased by layers. Table of contents leak dash so early in March, and prick out the plants in rich soil, in a sheltered position, to strengthen. As soon as they are large enough, plant them out in very rich, light ground in drill 6 inches. Between each plant and the rows 18 inches. Apart. For large exhibition leak sow in boxes in February, under glass. Plant out in June in trenches 15 inches. Wide and 18 inches. Deep, with plenty of old manure at the bottom of the trench and 6 inches. Of good light mold on the top of it. Gradually earth up as the stems grow. Water liberally in dry weather, and give a little weak liquid manure occasionally. 
Leontopidium-hardy perennials, succeeding best in peat soil. They are most suitable for rock work, and may be increased by seed or division of the roots. Bloom is produced in June. Height, 6 inches. Leopard's Bane. Seed Aronicum. Leptosiphon dash charming hardy annuals which make nice pot plants. The seed should be sown in rich, light soil peat for preference. If this is done in autumn they will flower in April and May, if sown in spring they will bloom in autumn. They are very attractive in beds or ribbons, and also on rock work. Height, 3 inches. To 1 foot leptospermum dash neat greenhouse evergreen shrubs, most at home in equal portions of loam, peat, and sand. Cuttings may be struck in sand under glass. They flower in June. Height, 4 feet to 5 feet. Leshenaltia elegant greenhouse shrubs, delighting in a mixture of turfy loam, peat, and sand. They are evergreen, flower in June, and are propagated by cuttings of the young wood under glass. Height, 1 foot lettuce. So early in February on a slight hotbed, and prick out into a well-manured and warm border, having the soil broken down fine on the surface. For early summer supply so outdoors in March, and at intervals till the middle of September for later crops. Some of the plants raised in September should be wintered in a cold frame, and the remainder transplanted to a dry, sheltered border, or protected with hand lights. The June and July sowings may be made where the plants are intended to remain. They should stand from 6 to 9 inches. Apart. A north border is a suitable position in the summer months, as they are less exposed to the sun, and do not run to seed so quickly. The cos lettuce requires to be tied up to blanch, this should be done 10 days before it is wanted for use. Cabbage lettuce does not need to be tied. Lucanthemum, hardy marguerites, dot dash same treatment as chrysanthemum. Lucogem, snowflake, dot dash also known as St. Agnes flower. Handsome plants. The flowers are pure white, every petal being tipped with green, dropping in a cluster of from 6 to 8 blooms, each nearly 1 inch long. They grow freely in almost any soil, sandy loam being table of contents preferable. Increased by offsets from the bulb, or by seed as soon as it is ripe. The spring snowflake blooms in March, the summer variety in June. The latter is a much more vigorous plant than the former. Height, 12 inches to 18 inches. Look of it and brownie dash a popular white foliaged bedding plant, which may be increased by dibbling cuttings in sandy soil and placing them in a cool frame. Louisia reedy viva dash this makes a pretty rock plant. It is a perennial and quite hardy, but requires plenty of sun. During April and May it produces large flowers varying in color from satiny rose to white. The most suitable soil is a light loam mixed with brick rubbish. It is increased by division of the root, or it may be raised from seed. Height, 3 inches. Lacesteria formosa. Ornamental plants, the flowers resembling hops of a purple color. They will grow in any soil, but need protection in winter. They are multiplied by cuttings. Height, 3 feet Liatris pycnosticia. A curious old herbaceous perennial, now seldom met with sending up late in summer a dense cylindrical purple spike two feet high. It needs a rich, light, sandy soil, and to be protected during the winter with a thick covering of litter. The roots may be divided in the spring. Height, 3 feet. Libertia formosa dash the narrow foliage and spikes of pure white flowers, produced in May and June, render this hardy perennial very ornamental. The soil should consist of equal parts of loam and peat. It is propagated by dividing the roots. Height, 1 foot Livonia floribunda. This is a winter flowering plant, and is easily grown in a cool greenhouse. It is very useful for table decoration, its slender red and yellow tubes of bloom being very effective, but it does not do to keep it for any length of time in a room where there is gas. When flowering has ceased, encourage new growth by giving it plenty of water, air, and sunlight. The new shoots should be cut back in May, and the tips of them used as cuttings, 
which strike readily in good mold. Height, 2 feet ligastrum, privet, dot dash L. Ovalifolium is a handsome hardy evergreen, of very rapid growth, and one of the best ornamental hedge plants in cultivation, especially for towns or smoky situations. L. japonicum is likewise ornamental and hardy, tricolor is considered one of the best light-colored variegated plants grown. L. Coriaceum is a slow-growing, compact bush with very dark, shining green leaves, which are round, thick, and leathery. Privet will grow in any soil or situation, and is readily increased by cuttings planted in the shade in spring. Lilac C. Syringa Lilium The lily is admirably adapted for pot culture, the table of contents conservatory, and the flower border, and will flourish in any light soil or situation. To produce fine specimens in pots they should be grown in a mixture of light turfy loam and leaf mold. Six bulbs planted in a 12 inches. Pot form a good group. The pots should have free ventilation, and the bulbs be covered with one inch of mold. For outdoor cultivation plant the bulbs four to five inches deep, from October to March. After once planting they require but little care, and should not be disturbed oftener than once in three years, as established plants bloom more freely than if taken up annually. Give a thin covering of manure during the winter. Lilium seed may be sown in well-drained pots or shallow boxes filled with equal parts of peat, leaf mold, loam, and sand. Cover the seed slightly with fine mold and place the boxes or pots in a temperature of 55 or 65 degrees. A cold frame will answer the purpose, but the seeds will take longer to germinate. The Lancifolium and Oridum varieties have a delicious fragrance. Lilium continued. Candidum, the Madonna, or white garden lily, should be planted before the middle of October, if possible, in groups of three, in well-drained, highly manured loam. Should they decline, take them up in September and replant at once in fresh, rich soil, as they will not stand being kept out of the ground long. They are increased by offsets. As soon as these are taken from the parent bulb, plant them in a nursery bed. After two years they may be transferred to the garden. This lily is quite hardy, and needs no protection during winter. Lancifolium make very fine pot plants, or they may be placed in a sunny situation in the border, but in the latter case they must have a thick covering of dry ashes in winter. If grown in pots place them, early in March, in rich, sandy soil. Three bulbs are sufficient for an 11 inches. Pot Give very little water, but plenty air in mild weather. Let them grow slowly. When all frost is over place pans under them, mulch the surface with old manure, and supply freely with air and water. They are propagated by offsets. Martagon, or Turk's cap, requires the same treatment as the candidum, with the exception that a little sand should be added to the soil. Tigranum, tiger lily, also receives the same treatment as the Madonna. When the flower stems grow up they throw out roots. A few lumps of horse manure should be placed round for these roots to lay hold of. They are increased by the tiny bulbs which form at the axis of the leaves of the flower stem. When these fall with a touch they are planted in rich, light earth, about 6 inches. Apart. In 4 or 5 years time they will make fine bulbs. Oridum and Zovitzianum or colchicum, thrive best in a deep, friable, loamy soil, which should be well stirred before planting. If the soil is of a clayey nature it should be loosened to a depth of several feet, and fresh loam, coarse sand, and good peat or leaf mold table of contents added, to make it sufficiently light. For pardolinum, the panther lily, and superbum mix the garden soil with three parts peat and one part sand, and keep the ground moist. They should occupy a rather shady position. All the other varieties will succeed in any good garden soil enriched with leaf mold or well decayed manure. For Valida, Scarborough lily, Belladonna, and Formosissima, or Jacobean, lilies, see Amaryllis. For African lily, see Agapanthus. For Peruvian lilies, see Alstromeria. 
for St. Bernard's and St. Bruno's lilies, see Anthericum. For Caffer lilies, see Clivius. Lily of the Valley. Set the roots in bunches one foot apart, and before severe weather sets in cover them with a dressing of well-rotted manure. They should not be disturbed, even by digging among the roots. If grown in pots, they should be kept in a cool place and perfectly dry when their season is over, by watering they will soon come into foliage and flower again. For forcing put 10 or 12 buds in a 5 inches. Pot any light soil will do plunge the pot in a sheltered part of the garden. From this they may be removed to the forcing house as required to be brought into bloom. Plunge the pots in coconut fiber and maintain an even temperature of from 65 to 70 degrees. Lemnanthes Douglasii dash very elegant and beautiful hardy annuals, which are slightly fragrant. They must be grown in a moist and shady situation. The seeds ripen freely, and should be sown in autumn to produce bloom in June, or they may be sown in spring for flowering at a later period. Height, 1 foot Linaria dash these all do best in a light, sandy loam and make good plants for rock work. L. bipartita is suitable for an autumn sowing. The other annuals are raised in spring. L. triornithophora is a biennial, and may be sown any time between April and June, or in August. The hardy perennial, L. alpina, should be sown in April, and if necessary transplanted in the autumn. Linarius flower from July to September. Height, 6 inches. To 1 foot Linea borealis dash a rare, native, evergreen creeping perennial. From July to September it bears pale pink flowers, it makes a pretty pot plant, and also does well in the open when planted in a shady position. It enjoys a peat soil, and is propagated by separating the creeping stems after they are rooted. Height, 11 halves inches. Table of contents linum, flax, dot dash this succeeds best in rich, light mold. The linum flavum, or golden flax, is very suitable for pot culture, it grows 9 in in height, and bears brilliant yellow flowers. It requires the same treatment as other half-hardy perennials. The scarlet flax is an annual, very free-flowering, and unsurpassed for brilliancy, easily raised from seed sown in spring. Height, 11 halves feet. The hardy, shrubby kinds may be increased by cuttings placed under glass. A mixture of loam and peat makes a fine soil for the greenhouse and frame varieties. They flower from March to July. Lipia reptans dash a frame creeping perennial which flowers in June. It requires a light soil. Cuttings of the young wood may be struck under glass. Height, 1 foot lithospermum prostratum dash a hardy perennial, evergreen trailer, needing no special culture, and adapting itself to any soil. It is increased by cuttings of the previous year's growth, placed in peat and silver sand, shaded and kept cool, but not too wet. They should be struck early in summer, so as to be well rooted before winter sets in. Its blue flowers are produced in June. Height, 1 foot losa. The flowers are both beautiful and curiously formed, but the plants have a stinging property. They grow well in any loamy soil, and are easily increased by seed sown in spring. Flowers are produced in June and July. Height, 2 feet besides the annuals there is a half-hardy climber, L. Arantiaca, bearing orange-colored flowers, and attaining the height of 10 or 12 feet lobelia- These effective plants may be raised from seed sown in January or February in fine soil. Sprinkle a little silver sand or very fine mold over the seed. Place in a greenhouse, or in a frame having a slight bottom heat, and when large enough prick them out about one inch. Apart, afterwards put each single plant in a thumb pot, and plant out at the end of May. As the different varieties do not always come true from seed, it is best to propagate by means of cuttings taken in autumn, or take up the old plants before the frost gets to them, remove all the young shoots, those at the base of the plant are best, and if they have a little root attached to th. M so much the better, and plant them thinly in well-drained, shallow pans of leaf mold and sand. Plunge the pans in a hotbed under a frame, shade them from hot sunshine, 
and when they are rooted remove them to the greenhouse till spring, at which time growth must be encouraged by giving a higher temperature and frequent siringing. They may then be planted out in light, rich soil, where they will bloom in June or July. Height, 4 inches. Lobels catch fly dash C. Silene. London pride dash C. Saxifrage. Lonicera dash hardy deciduous shrubs, which will grow in any ordinary soil, and produce their flowers in April or May. They are propagated by cuttings planted in a sheltered position. Prune as soon as table of contents flowering is over. Height, from 3 feet to 10 feet La Fospermum dash very elegant half hardy climbers. Planted against a wall in the open air, or at the bottom of trellis work, they will flower abundantly in June, but the protection of a greenhouse is necessary in winter. They like a rich, light soil, and may be grown from seed sown on a slight hotbed in spring, or from cuttings taken young and placed under glass. Height, 10 feet love apples dash sea tomatoes. Love grass dash sea irigrostis. Love in amos dash sea nigella. Love lies bleeding, amaranthus caudatus, dot dash a hardy annual bearing graceful drooping racemes of crimson blossom. The seed should be sown in the open at the end of March, and thinned out or transplanted with a good ball of earth. Makes a fine border plant. Height, 2 feet Luculia gratissima. A fine plant either for the wall or border. It grows well in a compost of peat and light, turfy loam, but it is not suitable for pot culture. During growing time abundance of water is needed. When flowering has ceased, cut it hard back. It may be increased by layering, or by cuttings placed in sand under glass and subjected to heat. It flowers in August. Height, 8 feet Lunaria dash sea honesty. Lupins dash though old fashioned flowers, these still rank among our most beautiful annual and herbaceous border plants. They may be grown in any soil, but a rich loam suits them best. The seed germinates freely when sown in March, and the flowers are produced in July. Height, 2 feet to 3 feet likeness. Hardy perennials which, though rather straggling, deserve to be cultivated on account of the brilliancy of their flowers. L. calcedonica, commonly known as ragged robin, is perhaps the most showy variety, but L. viscaria plena, or catch fly, is a very beautiful plant. They grow freely in light, rich, loamy soil, but need dividing frequently to prevent them dwindling away. The best season for this operation is early in spring. Beyond the care that is needed to prevent the double varieties reverting to a single state, they merely require the same treatment as other hardy perennials. They flower in June and July. Height, 2 feet to 3 feet lyre flower dash C. dilitra. Lysimachia clethroides. This hardy perennial has something of the appearance of a tall speedwell. When in flower it is attractive, and as it blooms from July on to September it is worth a place in the border. A deep, rich loam is most suitable for its growth, and a sheltered position is of advantage. The roots may be divided either in table of contents November or early in spring. Height, 3 feet Lysimachia numularia, creeping jenny, dot dash this plant is extremely hardy, and is eminently suitable either for rock work or pots. It is of the easiest cultivation, and when once established requires merely to be kept in check. Every little piece of the creeping root will, if taken off, make a fresh plant. Lithrum. Very handsome hardy perennials which thrive in any garden soil, and may be raised from seed or increased by dividing the roots. They flower in July. Height, of different varieties, 6 inches. To 4 feet m Madia dash a hardy annual of a rather handsome order. The seed should be sown in May in a shady situation. The plant is not particular as to soil, and will flower about 8 weeks after it is sown, and continue to bloom during August and September. Height, 11 halves feet Magnolia grandiflora. A handsome, hardy evergreen, with large shining, laurel-shaped leaves, and highly scented, tulip-shaped white flowers. A noble plant for a spacious frontage, but in most places requires to be grown on a wall. It flourishes in any damp soil, and is increased by layers. 
flowers in August. Height, 20 feet Mahonia dash handsome evergreen shrubs, useful for covered planting or for grouping with others. They grow best in a compost of sand, peat, and loam, and may be propagated by cuttings or by layers of ripened wood, laid down in autumn. They flower in April. Height, 4 feet to 6 feet. Mayanthemum bifolium dash the flowers of this hardy perennial are produced in April and May, and some would resemble miniature lily of the valley. Seed may be sown at the end of July. The plant will grow in any soil, but delights in partial shade. Height, 6 inches. Maize dash caesia. Malope. Very beautiful hardy annuals having soft leaves. They may be raised from seed sown in April in any garden soil. They bloom in June or July. Height, 11 halves feet to 2 feet malva dash very ornamental plants, more especially the greenhouse varieties. The hardy perennials succeed in any good garden soil, and are increased by seed sown in the autumn, or by division of the root. The greenhouse kinds should be grown in rich earth, these are propagated by cuttings planted in light soil. The annuals are poor plants. Some of the varieties bloom in June, others in August. Height, 2 feet Mondevilia swabolans dash a fine climbing plant bearing very sweet white flowers in June. It is rather tender, and more suitable for the table of contents conservatory than the open air. It does not make a good pot plant, but finds a suitable home in the border of the conservatory in equal parts of peat and sandy loam. In pruning adopt the same method as for the vine or other plants which bear flowers on wood of the same year's growth. It is propagated by seed sown in heat, or by cuttings under glass. Syringe the leaves daily during the hot season. A temperature of from 40 to 50 degrees in winter, and from 55 to 65 degrees in summer should be maintained. Height, 10 feet manures. Dash one of the best fertilizers of the soil is made by saturating charred wood with urine. This may be drilled in with seeds in a dry state. For old gardens liquid manure is preferable to stable manure, and if lime or chalk be added it will keep in good heart for years without becoming too rich. A good manure is made by mixing 64 bushels of lime with 2 CWTS of salt. This is sufficient for one acre. It should be forked in directly it is put upon the ground. Superphosphate of lime mixed with a small amount of nitrate of soda and forked into the ground is also a fine manure, but is more expensive than that made from lime and salt. Charred cow dung is ready for immediate use. For established fruit trees use, in showery weather, equal quantities of muriate of potash and nitrate of soda, scattering one ounce to the square yard round the roots. Peruvian guano, in the proportion of one ounce to each gallon of water, is a very powerful and rapid fertilizer. In whatever form manure is given, whether in a dry or liquid form, care must be taken not to administer it in excessive quantities, for too strong a stimulant is as injurious as none at all. In ordinary cases loam with a fourth part leaf mold is strong enough for potting purposes. And no liquid except plain water should be given until the plants have been established some time. For roses, rhubarb, and plants that have occupied the same ground for a considerable time, Mix 1 pound of superphosphate of lime with half a pound of guano and 20 gallons of water, and pour 2 or 3 gallons round each root every third day while the plants are in vigorous growth. Herbaceous plants are better without manure. Liquid manure should be of the same color as light ale. Maple dash caesar. Marguerites, chrysanthemums frutescens, dot. The white Paris daisies are very effective when placed against scarlet geraniums or other brightly colored flowers, and likewise make fine pot plants. They will grow in any light soil, and merely require the same treatment as other half-hardy perennials. Height, 1 foot. See also Anthemus and Buphthalmum. Margericarpa cetosis, bristly pearlfruit, dot dash a charming little evergreen, of procumbent growth bearing throughout the whole summer a number of berries on the main branches. Being only half hardy, it requires protection from frost, but in the warmer weather it may be planted on rockwork in sandy loam and vegetable mold. 
Cuttings planted in moist peat under a hand glass will strike, or it may be propagated by layers. Height, 6 inches. Table of contents marigolds. Handsome and free-flowering half-hardy annuals. The greenhouse varieties thrive in a mixture of loam and peat, and cuttings root easily if planted in sand under glass. The African and tall French varieties make a fine display when planted in shrubberies or large beds, while the dwarf French kinds are very effective in the foreground of taller plants, or in beds by themselves. They are raised from seed sown in a slight heat in March, and planted out at the end of May in any good soil. Height, 6 inches. To 2 feet, see also calendula, tajits, and calthus. Martinia handsome half hardy, fragrant annuals. The seed should be sown on a hotbed in March. When the plants are sufficiently advanced transplant them singly into pots of light, rich earth, and keep them in the stove or greenhouse, where they will flower in June. Height, 11 halves foot marvel of Peru, Mirabilis, dot. Half hardy perennials, which are very handsome when in flower, and adorn equally the greenhouse or the open. They may be increased by seed sown in light soil in July or August and planted out in the border in spring. At the approach of frost take the roots up and store them in dry ashes or sand. They flower in July. Height, 2 feet Masonia dash singular plants, which to grow to perfection should be placed in a mixture of loam, peat, and sand. They require no water while in a dormant state, and may be increased by seed or by offsets from the bulbs. Height, 3 inches. To 6 inches. Mathiola dash C stocks. Mathiola bicornis, night scented stocks, dot dash a favorite hardy annual whose lilac flowers are fragrant towards evening. They may be grown from seed sown between February and May on any ordinary soil. Height, 1 foot matric aria dash this is a half hardy annual of little interest so far as its flowers are concerned, and is mostly grown as a foliage plant. The seed should be sown in a frame in March, and transplanted at the end of May. Height, 1 foot Mornia barclayana dash this elegant twining plant is best grown in pots, so that it can more conveniently be taken indoors in the winter. The soil should be light and rich. Cuttings can be taken either in spring or autumn, or it may be raised from seed. It does very well in the open during the summer, placed against a wall or trellis work, but will not stand the cold. In the greenhouse it reaches perfection, and blooms in July. Height, 10 feet Mrs. Pumilio. A pretty diminutive herbaceous plant. When grown in peat and sand in an open situation it survives from year to year, but it will not live through the winter in cold clay soils. Its pale green foliage is seen to advantage in carpet bedding, and its branched violet flowers, put forth from June to September, make it a desirable table of contents rock work plant. It may be increased by transplanting, at the end of April, the rooted stems which run under the surface of the ground. Meconopsis cambrica, Welsh poppy, dot dash an ornamental hardy perennial, often found on English rocks. It may be grown in any light, rich soil, is easily raised from seed, and blooms in June. Height, 1 minus a half feet medlars dash these trees will grow on any well-drained soil. The Dutch medlar is most prized, as it bears the largest fruit. It is raised from seed, and usually trained to a standard form. The Nottingham and Royal are also excellent varieties. Any special variety may be grafted onto the seedlings. On deep soils it is best grafted on the pear stock, on light, sandy soil it may be grafted on the white thorn. No pruning is required, beyond cutting away cross-growing branches. Megasia dash this hardy herbaceous plant flowers from April to June. A light, sandy soil suits it best. It may be grown from seed or multiplied by division. Height, 1 foot Melissa officinalis dash a hardy perennial, flowering in July. Any soil suits it. It is increased by division of the root. Height, 1 foot Melitus melissophyllum, large flowered bastard balm, Dot dash this handsome perennial is not often seen, but it deserves to be more generally grown, especially as it will thrive in almost any soil, 
but to grow it to perfection, it should be planted in rich loam. It flowers from June to August, and may be increased by division of the roots any time after the latter month. Height, 11 halves feet melon dash so from January to June in pots plunged in a hotbed, the temperature of which should not be under 80 degrees. When the plants have made four or five leaves, set them out in a house or hotbed having a temperature ranging from 75 to 85 degrees. Keep the plants well thinned and water carefully, as they are liable to damp off at the collar if they have too much wet. Do not allow them to ramble after the fruit has begun to swell, nor allow the plants to bear more than two, or at most three, melons each. They require a strong, fibery, loamy soil, with a little rotten manure worked in. The hero of Loch Inga is a grand white-fleshed variety, and Blenheim Orange is a handsome scarlet-fleshed sort. Menispermum canadense, moon seed, dot dash a pretty slender branched, hardy, climbing, deciduous shrub, with yellow flowers in June, followed with black berries. It grows in any soil, and can be propagated by seed, by division of roots, or by planting cuttings in spring in a sheltered spot. Height, 10 feet meant the rotunda floria variegata, variegated mint, dot dash a hardy perennial, which may be grown in any soil, and is easily increased by dividing the roots. It flowers in July. Height, 2 feet many and those dash treat as other hardy aquatics. Table of contents Menzigia, Irish Heath, dot dash this evergreen thrives best in fibrous peat to which a fair quantity of silver sand has been added. While excessive moisture is injurious, the plant must not be kept too dry, the best condition for it is to be constantly damp. Slips torn off close to the stem will root in sand under glass, placed in gentle heat. Height, 2 feet Mertensia dash these hardy perennials flower from March to July. They will grow in any garden soil, but do best in peat, and are propagated by division. They make fine border plants. Mertensia maritima and M. parviflora, however, are best grown in pots, in very sandy soil, perfection being afforded them during the winter. Height, 11 halves feet to 2 feet. Mesembryanthemums, ice plants, dot dash these half hardy, annual succulents have a bright green foliage covered with ice-like globules. They must be raised in a greenhouse or on a hotbed, sowing the seed in April on sandy soil. Prick the young plants out in May. If grown in pots they thrive best in a light, sandy loam. In the border they should occupy a hot and dry situation. Keep the plants well watered until established, afterwards give a little liquid manure. May be increased by cuttings taken in autumn. Cuttings of the more succulent kinds should be allowed to dry a little after planting before giving them water. A dry pit or frame is sufficient protection in the winter, they merely require to be kept from frost. Flower in July. Height, 1 foot mespolus dash for treatment, see meddlers. Meum athemanticum dash a hardy perennial with graceful, feathery green foliage, but of no special beauty. It is a native of our shores, will grow in any soil, blooms in July or August, and is freely propagated by seeds. Height, 1 minus a half feet Michaelmas daisies, starworts, dot. A numerous family of hardy herbaceous perennials. Some few are very pretty, while others can only be ranked with wild flowers. They thrive in any soil or position, but flourish best where there is a due proportion of sunshine. They are easily raised from seed, sown early in spring, or may be increased by root division either in the autumn, as soon as they have done flowering, or in the spring. They vary in height from 1 foot to 5 feet Michoxia campanuloides. This is an attractive border biennial, bearing from March to June white campanula-like flowers tinged with purple, on erect stems. It is not particular as to soil, but requires a southern position and protection in winter. Propagated by seeds in the same way as other biennials. Height, 4 feet. Mignonette dash for summer flowering plants sow the seed in spring, and thin out to a distance of 9 inches. Apart. To obtain bloom during the winter and spring successive sowings are necessary. Let the first of these be made the second week in July in light, 
rich soil. Pot off before frost sets in, plunge them in old tan or ashes, and cover with a frame facing the west. Another sowing should be made about the table of contents middle of August, giving them the same treatment as the previous, and a third one in February, in gentle heat. Height, 9 inches. To 3 feet the mignonette tree is produced by taking a vigorous plant of the spring sowing, and removing all the lower shoots in the autumn. Pot it in good loam, and keep it in the greenhouse in a growing state, but removing all the flowers. By the spring the stem will be woody. Let the same treatment be given it the second year, and the third season it will have become a fine shrub. It may be made to bloom during the winter by picking off the blossom in the summer and autumn. Height, 3 feet mildew. Syringe with a strong decoction of green leaves and tender branches of the elder tree, or with a solution of nitre made in the proportion of 1 ounce of nitre to each gallon of water. Another good remedy is to scatter sulfur over the leaves while the dew is upon them, afterwards giving them a siringing of clear water. Milk made dash C. cardamine. Milk thistle dash C. carduus. Mimosa. These shrubs are often called sensitive plants, on account of the leaves of several of the species of this genus shrinking when touched. They grow well in loam and peat with a little sand, but require to be planted in a warm situation or to have greenhouse care. Cuttings of the young wood root readily in sand under a glass. They may also be raised from seed. Mimosa